Good morning. Welcome to WPAT Live. I am Patricia Middleton, your host. I'm also the founder of Poetricia Publishing and The Village Authors. Today is episode nine of WPAT Live. And today's topic is one word, and it is go. Uh, in ASL sign language, that's go. <laughs> so I want to, in honor of this weekend being Pentecostal weekend, tomorrow is the day that Pentecostal believers and Christians in general all over the world are celebrating the day of Pentecost. And so today's topic is entitled, Go, the prelude to the day of Pentecost. Technically, it's the prelude to it, but it's the topic for today. And um, just as always, I have my Bible, I have my notebook, and there it is with notes on it. And uh, one of my books, maybe I'll read from one of my books, maybe I won't. As long as I have the book, we are set to go. So I want to give you all of the scriptures that um, we will be reading from today, you and I together. Matthew chapter 16, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 through 20, Mark chapter 16, verse 14 through 20, Luke chapter 24, verse 44 through 49, and finally Acts chapter 1, verse 4 through 8. So let's get started. And although I have my hard copy Bible today, I'm going to be using my Bible app just to move around a little bit quicker. So in Matthew 28 verses 16 through 20 included are the two verses that make up what is known as the Great Commission, the Great Commission. When you're commissioned to do something, you're sent, you're hired sometimes, and um, you're going on a mission, commission, it's in there. You're committed to this mission. And so let's just read. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. Now, this is after the resurrection, after the 40 days that Jesus showed himself on earth uh, to many different people. And he has led his disciples out and he is about to leave them bodily for good for now. And so he's, uh, again, led the 11 disciples into a mountain where Jesus appointed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them and said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe whatsoever things I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Now that was Matthew. Mark 16, verses 14 through Eighteen, not twenty. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven, because remember, by this time Judas, who had betrayed Jesus, went back to the Pharisees that he get, that he was paid the thirty pieces of silver. He tried to give the money back. He realized he was wrong, and the Bible actually says that he he repented to them. 
he repented to them. He realized he was wrong, but he repented to the wrong people. And when that remorse wasn't absolved after he tried to repent and re refund them their money, he went out and committed suicide. So that left 11 disciples. So after the 11, Mark 16, 14, after he sat, he ate meat with them and abraded them because of their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said, go, there's that word again, ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be condemned. And we're going to stop at verse 16. And I have a reason why. Now we're going to go to Luke 24. Halfway through our scripture reading, Luke 24. It's never a good idea to um, skimp on reading God's word. So <clears throat> Luke 24, 44 through 49. And he said unto them, these are the words, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written by the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Here's Jesus in Luke 24 confirming the messianic passages of the Old Testament. Verse 45, Luke 24. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behoove Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Now in that verse is the unspoken word go because they were in Galilee on a mountain. They were not in Jerusalem. So when he says tarry in Jerusalem, he's actually saying go to Jerusalem and wait until you are endued with power from on high. All right. And then the very last passage I want to read, Acts 1. Verse four through eight. And being assembled, this is all, all these passages are talking about the same event through different people's eyes, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Luke wrote Acts. And being assembled together with them, Acts 1 verse 4, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. That's the great event that we're celebrating tomorrow all over the world, the day of Pentecost. Okay. So he says, John truly baptized with the water. I'll read it again, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Verse six, Acts one. When they therefore were come together, they asked him saying, Lord, will, it, will thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus replied unto them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which are in the father's hands, in his own power. but Ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the world. You're going to be going, going, going. And when he spoke these things, while they beheld him, he was taken up out of their sight. Okay, so again, today's word is go. This weekend is Pentecostal weekend where believers all over the world are celebrating this day of Pentecost. But first, they had instructions before they were, he told them of this promise. He told them that um, even John began telling people, Mark, Matthew 311, John says, listen, I'm baptizing you right now for the remission of your sins, but there's one coming after me 
who's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. And so people knew that the Holy Ghost was coming. They were, they were told of this early in Jesus's ministry. And so here it is when Jesus says not many days hence, that promise is almost ready to come upon them. But first they had to, now we're going to go back to Matthew. In Matthew, his instructions weren't just go. It was specific. It was, okay, you can find it again, Patricia. It was go and teach and go and wait. I'm sorry, go and teach and go and baptize. It was specific to who? To all nations. And in Mark, he was specific with his instructions of go. Go into all the world. Do what? Preach. To who? Every creature. In Luke, he says, he doesn't use the word go, but he implies go to Jerusalem and wait. So in this one is go and wait until you're in due with power from Ohio so that you can do all these things. And then a finally, a finally, no, not a finally, then finally, Acts 1, he says, you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, which is, he says, not many days hence, not many days from now. And he says, after that, you'll be my witnesses. Where? Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. Go, 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 go. And so after that was when he was taken up. So a lot of times we have, and we like to use these deep words, unction from the Holy Ghost, prompting, urging, nudging, feeling. We know that God is telling us to do something. We know that he has gifted us to do something. And so we feel the urge to go, to jump up and go. But many times we don't wait to get confirmation on exactly where he wants us to go, what he wants us to do, who he wants us to see. And many times there is a go and wait period. Last week we talked about not being weary in well-doing, Galatians 6 and 9. And we talked about the end of that verse when it comes to I've been struggling as a, a self-published author and I'm not a best-selling author on the top of um, all the lists and what's happening. We talked about the word season. The end of that verse says, for in due season, you will reap if you faint not. And so when we look at today's lesson, go, and we think about the word seasons, God was giving them a glimpse of their future season. I want you to go into all the world. I want you to do these great and mighty things in my name, you know, or the remission of sins, repentance and the remission of sins should be preached in my name and all these places. But first, before that, before that season, I need you to go to Jerusalem and wait until you receive power from on high, power to do all of the things that I'm calling you to do in your next season. And so the Holy Ghost is described as so many different things, the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the spirit of God, the, the teacher of all things, the spirit of truth, so many different things the Holy Ghost is to us and does for us, in us, for us, and through us. So Jesus is telling them, listen, someday 
you're going to be doing all these things all over the world. But first, you got to be equipped. You got to be equipped. Now, you've been with me for these three years, and I've taught you and ministered to you. And you've witnessed my teaching. Because remember, he said, teaching them whatsoever things I have commanded you. Not go out there and teach your own thing. Not go out there and teach them uh, how to build a house. He didn't tell them to do that, your gifts or how to fish. They had talents of their own. What he told them to do was to go and preach my word. Preach the things that I've taught you, I've commanded you. Preach your remission, repentance and the remission of sins. He was very specific about what he wanted them to teach and preach, who he wanted them, he said, all the world. And he, Oh, you've witnessed my first on-air sneeze. <laughs> Pardon me. He also told them exactly how he wanted them to do it. I want you to make disciples. So how do you make disciples? You, you baptize them and you teach them whatsoever things Jesus commanded. And then in, in Luke, he says, repentance and remission of sins should be teached in my name. So God is very specific about what he wants us to do. If we're paying attention, if we're listening. And um, there is a season for everything, Ecclesiastics 3 and 1. To everything, there is a season and a purpose for every, and a time for every purpose under heaven. There's a season and there's a time. Didn't he even use those words in a short rebuke to, to the disciples? Listen, I'm trying to tell you, go to Jerusalem, receive this Holy Ghost, this promise of the Father, and then preach in all the world. And they're stopping asking him, um, is, this the, is this when you're going to restore the kingdom to Jerusalem? And they're so not listening and paying attention. They're, sometimes um, there's a phrase, listen to understand. Most of us, nine times out of 10, if we're not very intentional, we're listening to respond. We're listening to respond. I uh, spent 21 years working for uh, Bella, Pennsylvania, Bell Atlantic, Verizon. During those years, it went through a lot of different changes, the company. And in customer service, you know, on the 800 number, you have the little headset, you're in the cubicle hole. And <clears throat> what the customers don't know is that many times we were being monitored, we used to call it monitored by our supervisors. And there was this, they were in a conference room, this big speakerphone apparatus in the middle of the table, and they would just punch in an extension and listen to our calls. And I, was very young. This is not the Patricia of today. And I would get written up so many times because the supervisors would say, you cut the customers off you, you, as if you already know what they're going to ask you and you give them the answer. It's like you're, you're in a hurry. You're trying to rush them off the phone when you know that at the end of their request, you have something you need to sell them. And I would get written up and I would say, well, I, I, hope they're, I know what they want. When they begin the, the question, I know, yes, even if you know what they're getting ready to say, you're not listening to understand them, to have empathy with them. Uh, you're listening, only waiting for, your, for their pause so that you can respond. And this is what, <laughs> through trial and error, <clears throat> I learned to overcome that habit. But this is what the disciples were doing in Acts, in verse six. Jesus is telling them, John truly, verse five, he says, John truly baptized you with water, but you'll be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many, many days hence. Now, when you put all of the other verses together from Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you know that he has told them that remittance and re remission of repentance and remission of sins is going to be preached. He told them uh, that 
He wanted them to make disciples by baptizing them and teaching them whatsoever things he commanded them. There were a lot of other things he said before he got to John truly baptized with water, but you'll baptize with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. I need you to go into Jerusalem and wait for the power to be in due from on high. What was their response? Verse six, when they therefore will come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, will at this time thou restore the kingdom to Jerusalem, to Israel? They were listening to respond. They were not listening to understand what Jesus was saying. And what was his rebuke? It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the father has put in his power. It is not for you to know all the time when your season of waiting is going to be over and it's going to be time for you to go. It's not for you to know the time or season. What, what is for you to know? Verse eight, you'll receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you'll be my witnesses in all the world. That's what you need to focus on, receiving the power, not the seasons that I'm going to make moves in the kingdom. This is what Jesus is telling his disciples. So there's a lesson in there, number one, for us to listen to understand, not listen to respond. Listen to understand, not listen to respond to one another and to God. A lot of times in my, in my earlier years and in my intermediate years of being saved, I'm approaching my um, spiritual birthday, May 28th, uh, 1978. The first of the, the filling of the Holy Ghost. I was filled with the Holy Ghost at 15, 1978. I'm approaching. And so Jesus and I have been on this walk. Well, basically, I've been on this walk with Jesus for many years. And I was just like the disciples for many of those years. I feel God leading me to do something. I jump right up. I get no comprehension. I get no confirmation, no understanding. I go based on what I think he said. I'm pretty sure I'm confident. Yeah, go and do it. And then in the middle of trying to do it, I realized that is not what he meant at all. Listen to understand. Get clarity on exactly what God wants you to do, how he wants you to do it. You have a book in you moving now into the practical tips. Well, still spiritual tips, but moving now into the application as for us writers and gifted people, uh, whether it's writing or singing or ministering or whatever your spiritual gift is, we need to get clarity on exactly, just like God, just like God explained to the disciples. He gave them a who, what, when, where, why, and how. We need to get clarity on that so that we don't pollute or defile the spirit being somewhere, our gift being somewhere we're not doing something we totally aren't supposed to be doing. Okay, so he told them where, he told them who, he told them what, and he told them how. He, he didn't tell them when, because the when was subject to them being obedient to the words, wait. There was the go in there, go to Jerusalem and wait to be endued with the power from high. And then you'll have the power to be my witnesses in all these places, Judea, Samaria, Jerusalem, the other most parts of the world. So the when, and isn't that just like God, not to tell us the when, <laughs> I'll never forget. I'll share one more testimony. So today is going to be a sharing of testimonies. I will not be breaking open the books and sharing any poetry. I feel uh, and know that right now for sure. Uh, see, I've gotten clarity. I've waited to be sure instead of jumping right in with a poem. So there was a situation I was... Um, uh, let's see, what year was this? I can't remember. Um, well, anyway, I was coming home from work and I had this ritual. My daughter was in school and 
she was on campus. My son worked the, uh, I think it's the middle shift. So he worked like 4 p.m. to midnight or something like that. Long story short, when I came home, the house was empty. And I had this ritual. I would sit in my favorite chair in the living room and I would have my meditation. I would have my prayer. I would have my Bible study, just me and Jesus. And one of these times, one of these days, evenings, I was in my prayer, you know, in my chair, in my prayer, in my chair. And I was praying to the Lord, you know, concerning uh, a companion, concerning getting married. And I was praying, Lord, you know, you, you promised me the desires of my heart and you promised me this and that. You know how we give God's word back to him as if he doesn't know it. But it's a beautiful thing to pray his word. But um, I'm giving God's word back to him saying, you said this and you said that. And then I felt the, I heard the Lord say to me, someone is praying for you. You are the desire of someone's heart. I'm like, what? <laughs> Just as clear as day right there in that living room. And I said, Lord, now I didn't, now, now, now what I should have done was to immediately continue praying, go into praise. Thank you, Lord. You know, your will be done. What did I do? When, Lord? Who? Well, when is it? Well, how will I know? Well, who? I went right into <laughs> responding instead of understanding. But God is so patient with us. Uh, some of us are hard-headed children and we just have to take tests after tests until we get it right. And I'm asking him, well, how will I know who it is? And when was the, when is this going to happen, Lord? And you know what the Lord's next words to me was? I think I started saying, what, do I, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do, Lord? And he said, live your life. <laughs> I love how God deals with me because he cuts right through all the Patricia, right to the core. And he goes, live your life. And other, I'm not telling you, just it's not for you to know. It's that's why this, this verse means so much to me. Verse seven of Acts one. It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own power, but you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you'll be my witnesses. Live your life, your life in Christ. Concentrate on what you're doing right now being filled with the Holy Ghost and being a witness unto God, exercising your gifts to build and advance the kingdom, right? To glorify God, to edify believers and evangelize the world. Live your life. Not living your life like it's golden <laughs> from Jill Scott, but live your life in Christ. Keep doing the things that I have, whatsoever things I have commanded you. He was giving me a glimpse, but I immediately got off track. I finally got myself together in that prayer and just began praising and, and thanking him, which I should have done in the beginning. But this is how it is. And so as we apply these beautiful principles found in God's word to our lives it, it, it spills over and it's applicable to other areas as well. You may feel, I'm ready. I need to write this book right now. I'm going to go and I'm going to pay all this money to this company and just give them the manuscript and just let them do it. I'm going to jump up and just jump up and do it. But there's a process that you have to go through. There's a waiting period. There's a season. What is in your season from concept to manuscript to final product? There's a whole lot of seasons in between. Please, uh, I'm going to put this in the, in the notes. Not now, but I'm going to put it in the uh, comment section. Selfpublishingroadmap.com. It is a beautiful and free document that gives you an outline from start to finish, from the beginning of your manuscript to your book signing. 
selfpublishingroadmap.com. And it, if you look at it, uh, I think it's four pages. No, it's eight pages. But if you look at it, it's kind of like a countdown to. And so it gives you four months in, three months, two months, one month. If you've ever planned any event, uh, then you know that there are series, there's stages, there's phases to an event. Uh, especially, uh, well, not especially, but uh, think of a wedding. From the proposal to the announcement to the invitations, you're getting the you're commissioning with the caterer, with the program, who's who your bridesmaids and groomsmen are going to be. You're also on the other side planning the honeymoon location, doing a down payment, flowers, the cake, all of these different things are stages. Now, yes, yeah, some people do go from proposal to marriage in elopement or city hall, but we're talking about we're using the example of the wedding to, to give you uh, an example of what this self-publishing roadmap.com document will show you. It's the countdown. I learned this very, um, very succinctly by my former pastor, District Elder Mark Jones, um, in relation to homegoing services. Because, you know, I was a church secretary and I was also on the choir. And so I was involved in different parts of programs, printing programs, and then singing on the choir. And so I learned early by watching him and how he would instruct the congregation when there was a homegoing service. He taught us, you count backwards. What is the day of the funeral? You count backwards. Oh no, I'm sorry. What is the time that you have to be at the graveyard? And then you count backwards the travel time from the church. And then you count backwards the processional. And then you count backwards the program, the speakers. Then you count backwards the size of the family. Then you count, and that way you know what time the viewing should begin. That was a count backwards. And I learned that. And that helped me in planning events. Count backwards. Some people use a count down. I count backwards. Even when I'm dealing with my clients, one of my first questions to them, um, once we began our journey in the very early stages is, when, what day do you want your book signing? What is your ideal date? And then we go backwards. Well, then you need to have this done. You need to have your cover done by this date. You need to have the proofreading done by this date. You need to have the editing done by this date, which means you need to be finished the last draft of your manuscript and handing it over to me by this day. I do the backwards. I count back because I learned that from my, my father in the gospel is what I call him. And so the roadmap document that I'm um, sharing with you, it is not uh, something that I designed. It is something that I found. Remember, I've been telling you for weeks now, there's so much free information on the internet when it comes to perfecting your gift. This is selfpublishingroadmap.com. It's a PDF file and it's beautiful. You may not have to go through every single stage and some stages you'll skip because it's not, maybe you're not having an in-person book signing because of the restrictions. So you eat the meat and spit out the bones says old folks used to say, and old folks like me still say. Uh, you take what you can get from the document and you apply it. It'll help you as you go through the different seasons leading up to the release of your book. And that is that. I was just glancing over my notes, make sure I hit everything, and I did. And so I hope that this uh, episode, Go, was a blessing to you. Um, we talked about the, the, the leading up the road to Pentecost, the road to Pentecost through the eyes of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And we, we looked at Matthew 28, Mark 16, Luke 24, and Acts 1. And how even though the command was to go, there, God was specific 
number one, and there was a waiting period. There was a season of waiting to be in to be empowered in order to go correctly, in order to go in in excellence, in order to go in the power of the Holy Ghost. So whatever your go is, there's also a season of waiting to be perfected, to be equipped, to be empowered, so that when you do go, you get where you're going. He wanted them to get where they were going. So he told them, go and wait. And after you're in due with the powerful mind, then you can go and teach all nations. You can baptize them. You can uh, teach them everything I commanded you. You can preach the gospel to every creature. You can teach repentance and remission of sins. All the things that he told them to do when they go. You'll be equipped and empowered to do all those things. You'll get where you're going if you wait for the power the power of the Holy Ghost. And so just like it worked for them then, it works for us now. Whatever we wanna do for Christ with our gifts, we need the power of the Holy Ghost to do it in excellence, to do it the way he wants us to do, it, right? To, to do it that in a way that brings him glory, the G effect, that edifies his body and that evangelizes the world. So there you have it. Thank you, Lord. We are so grateful for this lesson and for this time with you. Uh, Thank you for watching and commenting, whether you're watching live or at another time. You can also watch these episodes on YouTube at WPHT Live on my YouTube channel. And there are excerpts. If you don't have time to watch the full episode, you can find excerpts of each episode on WP uh, on um. WPATLive.com, the webpage. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, restrictions are being lifted everywhere legally, but that doesn't mean you have to relic. Re that doesn't mean I'm getting excited. That doesn't mean you have to relinquish them personally. Please. Be careful, be safe, enjoy yourself, have fun out there, but be wise, be wise or be still, <laughs> meaning be at home. Okay, that's all for now. Okay, till next week, take care and God. Take care and God bless.